Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. There's one more thing I want to mention about chapter four, and that is I want to discuss JS Lint. One would think that JavaScript linting would be the same as HTML and CSS validating. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple because JavaScript is controlled by a completely separate body of people than HTML and CSS. Now, if you've been with me in HTML and CSS, you already know how to use the validator at validator.w3.org. You probably have that website memorized. If you were to validate the files we use in this class, like tractor.htm for chapter four, you're going to find some validation errors. Not many, the code is pretty clean, but there are some errors. Line 17, there's a meta tag that has a problem. On line 32, there's an IMG tag that does not have an alt attribute, which you've learned in 110 that all images must have alternate text. And then there's a warning that just there's an H2 there that does not have any content. That would not be an error. We fill that content with JavaScript in the exercise. But for this class, I am not asking you to validate the HTML or the CSS or any of the data files that the author is giving you. And by the way, if you forget where your validators are, CSS validator or HTML validator, you're always going to be the top link. The CSS validator looks and acts and feels and works just like the HTML validator, and you know that. It's just that the URL jigsaw.w3.org slash CSS dash validator is more difficult to remember than the HTML validator URL. So let's go to JS Lint which is the closest thing we have to validating, we call it linting, our JavaScript code. And I've been linting here and I've seen some warnings. And I'm simply going to lint the JavaScript out of chapter four. Control A, select all, Control C, copy, and bounce over here to my JS lint. Control A, select all, Control V. Verily, verily, I say unto you, paste and then JS lint it. And there are a few things that I wanna show you about this. Sometimes you do get messages and it tells you what line, that are very valuable. So it is certainly worth going through the lint. It's telling me that I've got a redefinition of box month on line 31 and a redefinition of acres box on line 34. And if I go back to my code, I do have problems on line, well, it's 32 as well as 35. I'm declaring these variables twice. So I was just playing around with different ways to get the value out of the months box the way the book did it, and then the way that we learned how to do it in chapters one and two. So I'm going to comment out my second way of declaring these variables, just so I don't have duplicate variable declarations here. Okay, control A, control C, and then go back to my JS lint validator, control A, control V for paste, and JS lint again, and I've gotten rid of those two messages. But you're going to get probably quite a few more messages. Some of these are worth looking at and will help you debug your code, but it's not as clean and crisp, in my opinion, as the HTML and CSS validator. So this is a guide, but it's not a wherewithal, and we're gonna probably end up with some warnings. I want to take you to the bottom of the JS Lint site, though, and show you some options that you can check that will help cut down on bogus messages. For example, if you check that you assume that you're in a browser, then the JavaScript will know what document is. These checkboxes I also generally turn on. The white space mess is particularly helpful for me because the validator, the JS Lint validator, does not like it when I use tabs to indent my JavaScript. It prefers one or two or three spaces. If you use the this keyword, that gets flagged, multiple vars. The lint validator likes it when we declare all of our variables in a single statement or a block. So if I'm using var on each line in each statement, as I like to do, uh, that, that gets flagged. So you can see how many different ways we can tweak this to tolerate the habits. And sometimes, in my opinion, they're good habits, such as declaring each variable on its own line or using tabs for excellent indentation just to clean up the number of messages that you have to go through here in the JS Lint warnings. When you do your final project, I do expect your HTML and your CSS to validate cleanly. There is really no reason not to have perfect HTML and CSS 
and the HTML validator and the CSS validator will help you do that. But as far as your JavaScript, as long as it works, the JS Lint tool is simply a guide and a helper tool, and you probably will not get your JavaScript to be completely clean in here. If you have all kinds of time and want to explore these warnings, more power to you. The final thing I will say on the JS Lint website is if you read these instructions, this link at the very top, it's quite good. It does explain a lot of the warnings and good habits and ideas that you should follow to help your code JS Lint as cleanly as possible. There's a lot of great knowledge here. It's just probably beyond the scope of JavaScript 1. But believe me, we'll come back and work on this harder in JavaScript 2, and it's really good for you to be introduced to it as early as possible. Thank you.